And thank you so much for coming. Uh, my name is Nina. I'm one of the organizers of this year's Open Government Track. And I heard the last time that Scale actually hosted a an Open Government Track was back in what was it? it was Scale 4x. <laughs> so it was a while ago, and it's about uh, time that we had the Open Government Track again. So uh, with us here are Vicky Englert and Jason Hibbets, who are also co-organizers of this track. And uh, thank you also to Mark over there for uh, helping us out and uh, helping us get this up and running. So this Open Government Track, um, uh, part of the goal is really to connect uh, the open source community with the government technology community, uh, bring more open source technology into government, and also highlight a lot of the open source work, um, open data projects, and all those things that are actually going on in government right now. So uh, with that, I will hand this off to our first speaker, Bronwyn, and she can introduce herself. Yes, thank you very much. Thank you. We were Shall we try this? Let's see if this works. Hey, everybody. Good morning. You're going you're gonna to have to be really loud to fill up this empty room. So, woohoo! We're here for open stuff, open government. Um, thank you for being here. Um, I am Bronwyn Malden. I'm Director of Research and Evaluation at the LA County Arts Commission. And I'm going to tell you that every time, not every time, but very often when I go to open data meetings in county government or tech-related meetings, and you guys know how data and tech get conflated by um, the laypersons out there. But when I go to those meetings, I often get the huh, the Arts Commission is here? What are the arts doing here? But at the same time, when I am talking to the arts community that we serve and arts administrators and artists and arts educators, if I show them I can do a pivot table, they think I am doing magic. So my job is somewhere in between those two communities and trying to bring those two communities together. And that's really what the Datathon is all about. So that's what I'm going to talk about today. Um, first up, I think in terms of what people think when they think of data and arts, or tech and arts, they'll often think of like, artists who use data in their artworks. Um, Paula shares an artist who uses a lot of data in building these beautiful maps that are, you know, giant wall size that get exhibited in galleries and museums um, that use things like zip codes and air, uh, air travel and um, is in this one, like uh, median home prices. Um, or you might think about artists who use tech in their art making to critique and interrogate things in society using, there's a lot of big growth in 3D printing and um, AI and uh, AR and all of those sorts of things that are, um, that are I think there's, we've, we're seeing a lot of that growing in the arts field as well. So people think about that, using tech in art. Or you might think about people who use the aesthetics of technology and data in making beautiful artworks um, and things like this lovely painting here. But mostly what I do looks a lot more like this. And this is what surprises people, that in the arts we have data that looks like this. This is from a giant data set um, about arts nonprofits in LA County that's collected by a national organization that we have access to and can analyze to understand the status of arts nonprofits in the county. And we also do things that look like this. Um, this is a chart from a giant report on an evaluation of a creative graffiti abatement project that was done here in the second district in South LA where we had arts interventions take place at two parks and at two libraries, and we evaluated what was the effect of that project on the community. And I'm going to tell you one of the really interesting things that we learned from this evaluation 
is that when government makes an investment in a community, the community really feels that. When, we, they make, when it is made to feel more attractive and safe, that people feel, wow, the government really cares about me. And one of the lessons we've taken away from that is that perhaps when we're making those investments in government, in, in communities, as government, we should maybe make a little more noise about it and be a little, make it a little more apparent that that's, that's government that's doing those things. And we also do things that look like this. Um, this is a big, ginormous data project that we did um, here in LA County. How many folks here are, you're, are you all Southern California, LA County? Okay, all right. Here in LA County, um, uh, 10 million people, 4,000 square miles. It's the population of Georgia in a space the size of uh, Connecticut. And we have 81 different school districts in the county, two, about 2,200 public schools. We administered a survey to all of them about arts education, what's happening. We wanted to measure the quantity, the quality, the equity of arts education. And uh, we scored it. We looked at, uh, did some analysis around what demographic factors are associated with more or better uh, arts education in the public schools. But the other thing we did was we hired a firm to make a beautiful online interactive. So you can now, as a parent, as an advocate, as a school board member, as uh, someone who cares about edu arts education, look up any school, any district in the county, find out what disciplines are being taught, to what grades, uh, what, uh, what outside teaching artists are coming in to teach. You can compare your school to another school, school to a district, district to a district. You can download all our data we, in a you know, lovely little spreadsheet and do your own analysis. Um, so when we set out to do this, our goals for this project were that it should be um, very useful information, it should be easy to use, and because we are the Arts Commission, it must be aesthetically pleasing. And I think we hit all of those. So our Arts Ed profile is available online as well. So a little bit of information about what the Arts Commission is and how we end up doing this kind of work. We are what's called a local arts agency. Can I get a show of hands? Have who here has ever heard of a local arts agency? This is a term that is familiar to you. Great, that means my next slide is useful because I'm gonna tell you what a local arts agency is. Every major city in the country has one. Most, uh, most mid-sized cities have a local arts agency. A lot of small cities have local arts agencies. These are divisions, usually divisions of local government, sometimes a nonprofit, sometimes maybe a little quasi-government. But if you think about what does the Parks and Rec Department do, what does the Transportation Department do, we do the same things they do, but for the arts. We make the infrastructure of the arts work. In general, we don't provide arts. We help people provide arts to the community. And in particular, we make grants to arts nonprofits. We do about four and a half million dollars in grant making every year to everything from the LA Philharmonic to a small community-based arts organization that um, maybe, you know, a, 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 a uh, small community theater that is all volunteer run and uh, has a budget of $1,000 a year. We run the country's largest paid summer internship in the arts. We pro provide support for arts education in the public schools. We are working more and more through our probation department and uh, mental health department to provide to build arts into restorative justice and uh, rehabilitation for youth. We do civic art, public art. You probably think of public art as a dude on a horse or in LA County, it's a mural. We do lots, public art can take a lot more forms. We do a lot of that. We do fund some free concerts. We have a strong focus and initiative on cultural equity and inclusion. We provide professional development services to help teaching artists, arts administrators, uh, arts educators, and sometimes artists. Mostly what we do for artists is help them figure out how to get a contract with a government arts agency. Um, and we do research and evaluation and data analysis. 
everything up to the final bullet is pretty common in local arts agencies. That final bullet, my role in our local arts agency, is quite unusual. And there are three of us on my team. This is, a, the, the city of LA has a, has a Department of Cultural Affairs and they have a person or two who do research, but other than that, it's really difficult to find people who, can, who actually do research and data analysis kinds of stuff in local arts agencies. And many people are jealous of us that we have this capacity. So in this way, we, as I say, we are like any other government department that most of the time the public never sees us. You know, the only time, like maybe if you pick up a program when you're at a, an arts event and down in the bottom where there's the logos, you might see our logo. Um, we are the behind the scenes building and supporting the infrastructure. So when, when folks are, you know, getting angry, sitting, they've gone to the opera and they're sitting there and they're going to the, talking about what's the government done for me lately? And you're like, well, the roads that you used to get here and the fact that when you flush the toilet, everything worked and the water went out and it's going to be cleaned up and uh, the restaurant you went to has been inspected and the fact that you have art to see, you have something to do on a Friday night. That's all what government does and we play a role in that. How many folks are familiar with this diagram? That, that's something I think you may have seen. I find this really useful when thinking about my role in a government arts agency. You know, data is that kind of un unstructured bits and bytes of little factoids that there's a lot of in the world. And it's only when you start to analyze those factoids, sort them and turn them into, uh, put them into context, start doing analysis, um, that you can start to transform little bits and bytes of data into information. And then that information I can share with my colleagues and information, when you start to put information to use and you test it out in the real world and you find out what works and what doesn't, that that information starts to become knowledge and over time as you've done lots of testing things out, and you use your knowledge and the real world and find out what happens, that if you are very lucky, one day you will become wise. And as this diagram suggests, there's a whole lot of data in the world and not enough wisdom. So, the way I think about things is my job is in that turn, transforming, collecting and transforming data and turning it into information so that people who work in my field, the arts ecology, can use it. And they generally function in the universe of transforming information into knowledge, and pu so putting information to work. And maybe some of them become wise. In, in reality, I like to think I, w I move all up and down this and, and I've got lots of wisdom to share, but most of my job on a day-to-day -day basis and where the data-thon comes in is in that transforming data into information and making it actually useful and actionable. So in turning data into information, one of the things we do is we publish reports. Um, you know, they are beautiful PDFs. We make sure they are aesthetically pleasing so that um, people will actually at least pick them up and read the first few pages. Um, but this is information that is intended to help the field. If you are running a, an arts nonprofit out in LA County, we want you to know about what's happening in you, what are your competitors doing in terms of salaries, benefits, and how they're using volunteers. We want our arts educators to have information about where, who's, who's doing good arts education and where they, where, where they, who they can look to for, for better examples of it. So these are all examples of reports we've issued. However, here's the problem. You know, we're, and even if we publish the report, and even if we publish the data behind it and we get on, you know, post all our data on Socrata and it's open and everybody can have it and we, because these are values for us, you know, open data and sharing information, throwing data at people is not enough. And we know this especially for our arts community that we serve. As I said, people think that, I, I know a lot of people who think that, like for whom like getting into a spreadsheet is the most terrifying thing in the world for them. And so I want them to use this information too. 
One of the things we do is usually when we issue a report, we hold a public event, we bring people together, we have some subject matter experts to talk about the content, about turning what, that information into action and how they have used that information. And it is those face-to-face -face interactions that we find absolutely critical. Posting stuff online, making this report available, printing it up, handing out is just not enough. We actually have to engage human beings in conversation if we're going to actually turn information into action. And that's how the Datathon came along. The Datathon, our first data, well, the, when I first started at the Arts Commission doing research was in 2013. And everybody I talked to apologized. Well, the first thing they would do when, they, they, when I met them and they, I told them what my job was, they apologized to me. For, you know, the arts, we're so behind. We don't understand data. We don't use it. We really should get better at it. There's hardly any arts data. And I quickly discovered that this was not true. The arts community can be extremely sophisticated in the way they think about data and the way they think about problem solving but they needed help to figure out how to do it better and they had, there were some skill sets they were missing and some analytical tools they were missing, but there's lots of data in the arts that they haven't mined yet. And so helping them to think differently about the data that did exist and how to apply some of the things that we know in the arts about rehearsal and practice and persistence and learning new things, that those are things we do really well in the arts, that we could do this with data as well. So I proposed back in 2014 to my boss, I said, we need to do something that brings our arts community together with kind of that civic hacking, those data nerds who want to help make the world a better place community, and let's all talk, and let's all have a conversation. And in 2014, she kind of said, hmm, that's interesting. Go work on another report. And I came back in 2015, and I came back in 20, and in 2016 is when she said, this, you need to do this. We need to host it, something and bring people together. And I had some conversations with my uh, a colleague at the city's Department of Cultural Affairs, and that's how together we dreamed up the concept of this datathon. Now, the purpose of this datathon was to help our arts community get better, get skills, get knowledge, and get more confidence about dealing with data but also to get that community of people who are engaging with open data and government and trying to solve problems to understand that there is a role for the arts in solving problems. That we actually do a pretty good job of engaging with communities in creative ways and we could help you do that. When you're thinking about a community that's underserved, are you thinking about arts in that community? What kind of arts and culture activities are taking place and how does that interrelate with transit? or with Seward. We believe there's a role for us and we want to be part of it. And we want you to think about our data sets. And then we also just want to continue to build out the quality and the quantity of the data sets that we have available. But all of this is with an eye to our fundamental mission is to ensure that everyone in LA County, every resident of the county has access to all of the benefits that the arts brings. And that's not just you know the joy and pleasure of experiencing a, a, a beautiful performance, that's also the jobs that are available, the leadership opportunities on boards of directors of nonprofits, that's the opportunity to perform yourself and not just sit in the audience or to paint or to make art and share it with others. So we wanna make sure everyone has access to the benefit of the arts and the Datathon was designed to bring people together to let's talk about what's the role of data in improving access to the arts. So in our first Datathon, we had about 100 people. We threw them all in a room together. We threw a bunch of data sets at them. We told them about Socrata and ArcGIS and uh, a little bit about Excel. And we gave them the task, broke them into groups, and gave them the task of coming up with just come up with a proposal, an idea for how to improve access to the arts. We had some great ideas. We had some not so great ideas. We gave out prizes. We had the uh, head of research at the National Endowment for the Arts came and, and gave our keynote speech. And at the end of the day, people were so excited and engaged. I mean, people stayed all day long. It was like so much better than I expected. 
that of course we had to do it again the next year. So, Arts Datathon number two in 2018, we, based on feedback we got, we narrowed our focus. We said we are only going to talk about collections data, although we used a very wide definition of collections. Collections data is basically the metadata that's associated with artworks. You know, you've got a painting on the wall, it's the size of the painting, it's the artist, it's the year it was made, it was the materials, it's all of that kind of metadata. And there are people who have amazing careers doing metadata and managing metadata around arts collections. And so we had, but had, we had a, our partnerships expanded. This is absolutely critical to making our data a success, is bringing together all of these uh, different communities. And we had eight different tracks to choose from. There was, we did some wiki edit a thoning, so around bringing more information about public artists in LA County into Wikipedia. Hollyhock House, if anybody knows, it's a Frank Lloyd Wright house. They are digitizing their collection, and so there was a session on that. There was a session on coming up with a better taxonomy, folksonomy, uh, tagging system for a collection of historic images at the East LA Library um, in a historically Latino community. Um, we had someone explore music and collections data around music. And even we had the Department of Military and Veterans Affairs, they have an amazing uh, collection of artifacts and memorabilia, um, and they are uh, archiving that. So fabulous day, we had a great time, we had amazing and wonderful people sitting together all day long talking about art data. And we had really fabulous swag, and we gave away cool stuff because the arts, and we had a team of people who were live archiving the entire event. So they ran around in matching little white coveralls, talking to people, collecting um, ephemera, taking pictures, doing audio images, uh, audio uh, recordings, and were constantly po posting that onto a Google site all day long so that anybody could follow along and see. And it was great during the day, but it also became a living archive that still exists now that you can go back and if you ever want to hear an interview with someone who participated in the collections datathon, it's all there for you to enjoy. The other thing we did was created zines for each of the datathons, and I have copies, so you are welcome to come grab one um, when, when we're done here. Uh, Again, you know, trying to just have something so people could take away, walk away and think about. And I think you may get a sense of these are very intro to what is a spreadsheet, what is metadata, and helping people get smarter about that. And now I get to the most important part, which is this year's Datathon, which is coming up soon. And our theme this year is around democratizing data and also democratizing the arts. And that will be happening on April 3rd, Downtown Public Library. If you are in the area, I would very much welcome you to come. We want to bring in more people from outside of our arts community. That's one of our very clear intentions this year, is to get beyond just the usual suspects. It's going to be fabulous. There will be a zine, um, but I can't give it out yet because you have to come to the Datathon to get it. We have more partners this year that we have brought in, including our good friends at Hack for LA and MapTime and others. And this year, we've uh, learned our lesson from trying to manage eight simultaneous tracks. Um, this one, we're only doing four, but these are four amazing tracks that really get to the breadth. I think in, it, we've really successfully gotten to the breadth of what do we mean by art to data? in four simultaneous tracks. We've got the hardcore data science track, and that's gonna be all about arts ed data. We're bringing in a bunch of related data sets to explore relationships between arts ed data and other things. We're going to have a session not on Wikipedia, but Wikidata, which in all honesty, I shouldn't confess this, I didn't even know it existed six weeks ago. But thank goodness I work with smart partners who do. So we're going to be doing data entry and building out Wikidata um, around public art in LA County. 
Then we have our border data session, which is our qualitative data session. And this is based on a, we're working with an artist, a local artist named Tanya Aganiga, who has a project she's been doing for a, co a couple of years now, where she is going down to the US-Mexico border and handing out cards and asking people to answer the question, what do you feel as you cross the border? She's collected nearly 10,000 cards and we, she wants to build this out and publish this as an open data set. And we want to, uh, so one of the tasks is we're gonna help with data entry at the Datathon, but to also use this uh, to have facilitated conversations about a very uh, polarizing and challenging topic uh, to help people talk about the border in a more constructive way, bringing the voices of people from the border into that conversation and using her art project to do that. And then the final session we'll be doing um, this is really, in some ways, our democratizing the arts session, um, where folks were going to be literally embroidering geodata onto fabric, to maps of LA County printed on fabrics. Nina is uh, one of the, uh, the, the, the brilliant minds behind that one. So we're gonna have these four amazing tracks. We're gonna look at data from, arts data from many different directions. There's quantitative data, there's qualitative data, there's the hardcore data science stuff, there's data entry for the public good, and there's crafting. Like whatever you're into related to data, there is a session for you at the Datathon. We have a website that you can come learn about more about it. Um, you can link to register for the Datathon. It's all day long, it's free, it's open to anyone. Um, and, uh, and I hope we will, and I'm really, I'm really hoping this year that I, I feel like this year we have kind of really hit our stride. I keep, I keep telling people, this is gonna be the best one yet. And I know that that's kind of like, a, you, everyone says that, but seriously, this is gonna be the best one yet. Um, and so anybody who's local, I hope you can come. That's everything I wanted to say about the Datathon. To be given. I have actually, I wanna say a lot more about the Datathon, but in, in interest of everyone's time, I'd love to answer any questions that anyone has. Uh, Wikidata data briefly. Uh, mm -hmm. What is your kind of viewpoint on that as far as uh, having repositories of data? Do you guys collect your own data mostly, or do you use their ontologies? Uh, what's the theory there? So we have we have where we intersect with that. I think mostly is uh, we have the LA County has a public art collection, and we manage that. Some of that is artwork that we have built and managed the process of ourselves. Some of that is stuff that's been donated. And um, what we've done, we have a, an internal database that we uh, saw on Embark. I, the folks who manage Embark understand that. We publish a subset of that data onto a Socrata, the county's open data portal. Um, but that's in Socrata and it has both all the pros and cons that go with being on Socrata. That we, it's publicly available, you can map it, you can do the analysis that you can do. But it is not linked to anything else. What I'm really excited about with Wikidata is bringing some of that data about our county-owned art collection into an, a linked open data set that will connect with others. That, you know, our, um, our, we have individuals in our civic art division who know a lot about the individual artists that we work with and that made those artworks but that's not necessarily publicly known and the ability to connect our artworks and our collection, some of which were made by some pretty well-known artists and also musicians. Hans Zimmer made a, um, a painting that's actually in the county collection. Um, to connect that through Wikidata to potentially other open data sources I think is really exciting. That's an opportunity for us. I, out of curiosity, how many, it, it, who, anybody here from government? One government, one government, anybody else want to claim government? 
Um, it's, I think that the idea of local arts aid, what's interesting for, for me is that even within government, local arts agencies are invisible. I still go to meetings of county government where they're like, what's the arts, what, what, what's the arts commission? Um, and so uh, I think that one of the things I'm hoping that the Datathon can do is also raise our visibility within our own government, but um, also raise our visibility, as I say, with a community like yours where you guys are doing data and tech stuff all the time that is far beyond anything that my agency could imagine doing. And one of the things I would really like to learn is what I don't know about what's possible if we brought in new tools. Um, you know, like I said, we are in our world, uh, convincing people to get into Excel is a leap for many people. And I'm gonna suspect that there are folks in the audience for whom are like, wow, Excel, you're still using that. Um, so so having, pe having folks from the open data and open tech community, I think, could really help us advance in our work. You're ready. OK. Um, are you looking for additional partners? I've got a couple different questions. So mm -hmm. first, uh, for the event, because I may be able to do some connection there. Um, let's talk, um, and if not for this year, this is obviously going to be going on for the future as well. And could you speak about any um, successes or examples that you've had of people who may have been afraid of spreadsheets who've been able to discover things uh, by attending one of these events? I'll tell you a funny story. I think I've only told it once this morning so far because it's one of my favorite datathon stories. The very first datathon, I, 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 uh, I had um, one of my staff people up at the front who actually, the staff person who was doing this has a, um, uh, a doctorate, um, it, her, her research methods when she got her doctorate was, a, was ethnography, so she's great with qualitative data. And, um, by the time she was a year into working for us, she was awesome at spreadsheets as well. And I, um, I had her up there presenting just some basics of how to use Excel. This was like really 101, like how to do use the function bar, how to calculate average. I mean, we're really basic stuff. But I also said, you gotta show them how to do a pivot table, at least show them. Because I'm telling you, people who don't know pivot tables, they think it's magic. So she gets up there. I'm standing in the back, and I'm watching, and she's going, and she goes. And at the aha moment of the pivot table, the person standing to me, next to me, I kid you not, gasped out loud and turned to me and said, what program is she using? <laughs> I said, it's Excel. So, um, so, so I mean, we have those people in our arts community, and we have some highly sophisticated people who are using, who are introducing me to things like Wikidata and linked open data, and we've got all of them in between. Um, so, I had another person at the same data sign come up to me later and say, "I'm going to go home and open a spreadsheet because I just didn't know this was possible." So we've got all of those folks in our universe. Our, we tend more on the spectrum towards the folks who, who either you know, only use a spreadsheet when they have to, and it usually involves a budget. Um, but we have them all, and that's part of the fun of this event, is trying to figure out how we can bridge and communicate to each other. And that's, that's, for me, that's the fun part. But let's talk. So when I worked in ad tech, we had a uh, we would talk about the trade-offs between exploration and exploitation, hmm. and the fact that we talk openly about exploitation in ad tech tells you a lot about ad tech. Uh, but it is one way to think about how to build a feedback loop around your data, and it sounds like you are at the exploration phase. If you were to hypothesize about exploitation, 
Like once you have, like, what is the goal? Is the goal to build a community that then has a feedback loop where you're constantly using data to do things? What does that look like for you? Like, how do, like, the data found in 10 years, because we're all talking about 10 year goals, right? <laughs> what, what is, what does that go to? Where would you like that to be? I, a couple of things I could imagine happening. One is seeing more other organizations making data available about their own work. Um, you know, we have something simple like there are 88 municipalities in LA County and uh, uh, many of us have some kind of public uh, art collection that we manage and our data sets, those of us even who even have all this information in a spreadsheet, our data sets don't talk to each other. So things where our, we could communicate with our colleagues in the field through our data and we could interconnect our data sets, that would be a big win in the long term. Um, more organizations asking me questions about data, I think, would be a real win. Where I sit, I end up being kind of a catch-all. I'm somebody that people out in the community come to, and um, you know, where's the? And they come to me with very often the question is, I need to do a survey. How do I do the survey? And my question back to them is, what's the question you're trying to answer? Let's figure out if a survey is the right way to do that. And if the questions I get become a little smarter, um, that that would be success. Um, and people using the data that we share. That's, that's really, I would love to see someone take one of our data sets, analyze it, and write their own report, or bring their own data set to bear against it and, and learn things. Those, those things would look like victory. One, one last question. Mm -hmm. Where and when is this again? April 3rd, Downtown Public Library. And All right. Thank you so much, Bronwyn, and uh, let's all give Bronwyn a big hand. Thank you.